Hi there, welcome to Sunnyside Journals. I'm Catherine and welcome to 30 minutes of my day. As you can see here, uh, I'm going to talk about a few, a few journals that will be going into my Etsy shop. Possibly later today, definitely for sure on Monday. Um, if I can get everything done, it'll be later today, but I'll make it, uh, I'll, I'll give fair notice on Instagram. I'll give a couple of hours notice on Instagram. Um, but if I can get, I still have to film the flip throughs and I still have to create the listing on Etsy. And that can, that's a little labor intensive because it's sort of like the paperwork that's got to be done ahead of time. Um, but if I can get that all done, then possibly these will be listed, uh, maybe, maybe around after dinner time t today, or else, like I said, for sure, most likely Monday morning. So yeah, um, I'm really excited. It's been a long time since I've had several books to put into my shop and it just happened to work out because I kept working and pausing and working and pausing on switching my rooms for the past eight or nine days that I was working bit by bit in several books and they all seem to all come together all around the same time. And then I didn't have time, like I said, to do any of the videos or prepare the listing or do the photos. So that's going to happen uh, later today. And yeah, three books are going in and uh, they're all quite different. They're diff They're all different in sizes. This is 176 pages. Stuart Little is 60 pages. And I'm in the house. Hold on, let me see. I forget. I forget. Let's see. Yeah, Country Banker is one set. Oh, Wind in the Wind in the Willows is 112 pages. So really, there's, you know, this is double this, and this is triple this. So we've got three different sizes of journals here, which is really nice. A little bit of something for everyone. And there's lots of, as ever, lots of room for journal writing. But I'm not going to flip through them right now. We'll, we'll flip through them later. But it does lead me to what I want to talk about. Because um, whenever I sell a journal in my Etsy shop, and I'm always the most comfortable, rather than letting them go to a pre-sale, I am much more comfortable um, letting, letting the... First come, first serve, the, the way it works on Etsy. Whoever clicks on it first, that's the home it was meant to go to. And it's just easier on my heart because if I could, I'd make a journal for everybody in the world <laughs> if it were physically possible. And it's not. So, but I do want to talk about um, several things that you can do to make it, uh, make your purchase on Etsy uh, simplified and faster because there are a few little things that you can do when you want to purchase something on Etsy because we've all been through it. I've even been through it. I have wanted to try and purchase a journal from a journal maker here on YouTube, uh, several journal makers, and I've had the same heartbreak <laughs> when I think, okay, I, 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 I'm going to grab it. It's going to be listed. I'm going to grab it. And, oh, it's sold. And yeah, it's discouraging because you think, wow, I was right there. So here's a few little things you can do. Um, Nick the Booksmith, she had a great tutorial on things that can make your Etsy uh, purchasing simplified and faster. And I've sort of elaborated on it a bit um, myself on things that I also do. Um, and I think uh, hopefully it will help you. I made myself a list so that I'll remember what to um, what to talk about and you know me because I always go off on a tangent hold on I'm going to lower the um, I'm going to lower the camera so if you want to be able to read my list you'll be able to hold on okay so of course naturally the first thing to do is if like right now say that one of these three journals it, you're thinking wow I, I really kind of like that journal I, I might I might like to maybe get that journal so you already know ahead of time that maybe that's a journal you'd like. Make sure that you have an Etsy account already set up. It's not the time to try and set up 
an Etsy account right when you're trying to purchase anything that's one of a kind. And it is faster if you've got an Etsy account. You don't want to have to purchase it as a guest. That will take this process longer. And so long as a journal is in limbo and hasn't had a boom credit card slapped down on it, anyone can pay, can jump in and pay for that journal while you're waiting to set up your account. So please go into Etsy, do it right now. If you don't already have an account, set it up. And then on the day of a sale, if you know ahead of time, approximately what time, go log in and make sure you're logged into your account. Now, if you already have an established Etsy account, take a look at it. Make sure your information is correct and that it's up to date. I, I have had experience where um, someone purchased one of my journals and they had inadvertently switched the numbers in their own address and didn't notice it until after I had already shipped the journal to the wrong address. And it took a while. It slowed down them getting their journal. But thank goodness the Postal Service was able to find the package because it was, it was shipping its way off uh, to the wrong house. And it could have actually just got lost. Fortunately, it didn't. So check your information. Make sure that it is correct and that everything there is up to date. Make sure you log in ahead of time because everyone's clocks are different and they can be off by three, four, five minutes. And that really can make a big difference. If somebody is going to list something, say at 3 p.m. and, uh, but your clock actually, according to their time is 3 or 4 p.m., you've lost four precious minutes. So make sure that you're logged in if you can ahead of time. Don't wait for Etsy to send you a notification because if, if, you know, if you've got a favorite shop, then if you're like me, I get notifications when, when my favorite shops put new things in their shop, but you can still, that can still slow down your time to get over there and purchase something that is a one of a kind thing. So, and here's another thing is refresh your page constantly. If you're sitting there waiting for something to show up in a shop, Etsy, the Etsy system does not automatically refresh their own page. You have to do it on your own computer. You have to click on that little gray box beside the URL bar that has the circle with the arrow on it. And you have to keep refreshing it yourself. Etsy won't do that for you and it can show up. So if you, if you sit there and just stare at the old screen, something can get listed, purchased, and gone at, in the time that you've been staring at an old screen. So just keep refreshing your own screen, and it will show up. If, the, if somebody is honestly listing anything, I'm using the generic term because it's not necessarily just me. This applies to any, um, any person who sells one-of-a-kind items in Etsy, and you're hoping to maybe be the person to purchase it. Um, now, as again, for speed, with Etsy's platform, paying with a credit card that you already have uh, logged into your account information is faster than paying with PayPal. And I know some people are more comfortable with PayPal, but the truth of the matter is you will get through your payment faster with a credit card because you don't have to go to that secondary PayPal source and fill in your purchase over there because you could be over at PayPal going, oh, yeah, I got it, I got it, I'm going to pay for it with PayPal. But if somebody comes in faster, they've got a credit card, boom, buy now, and the journal could be gone. And here you are thinking that you could have, that you had it, and when actual, it was still in limbo because it, it wasn't paid for yet. That means it's anyone's... It's up for grabs to anyone, which leads me to this one. If you're sure something on Etsy, in anyone's Etsy shop, is something that you want, don't click on add to cart, click on buy now, go through and pay for it as fast as you can. Because these this add to cart, think about it this way, it's like a cyber grocery cart. And imagine your 
rolling down a grocery aisle, pushing your cart, and you've got the best watermelon that was in the produce section, and it's in your cart. And then you think, oh, hold on, I need some Cheerios. So you just wander over six feet away, over to get your box of Cheerios off the shelf. A lady can pull up beside you with her cart, pick up your watermelon out of your cart, put it into hers, and roll away. And that's the same way it works. If you put something in Add to Cart on Etsy, if someone else comes along and says, hold on Etsy, I got my credit card out right now. I'm ready to pay cash money for this right now. Well, plastic money. Um, Etsy will say, okay, it's yours. And off it goes to the other person while you've still got it just sitting in Add to Cart. And again, off it goes with the person who's ready to pay immediately if you're trying to pay for it over on PayPal. I hope that makes sense to you. So if you can do these things, maybe that will help make, simplify your PayPal, your PayPal, your Etsy purchasing um, of one of a kind items from any shop in Etsy, not just mine. Uh, these things will all make it a little easier, a little faster for you. And, uh, and hopefully that helps. Uh, if there's something that you see in my shop or in anyone else's shop and you know that it's time sensitive and you know it's a one of a kind item. There we go. That's my, my there. there's my Etsy uh, spiel for the day. And now I've got a bit of a thrift haul. So let me put this out of the way. So I was at my thrift shop a few times this week because I was dropping things off. And, um, oh, hold on. I've got to grab something over here. Um, my, because my style has really evolved, I'm, I'm still going to lift this camera up a bit. That's, this is a little too close. Hold on. Okay, better. Um, anyhow, my, my style has evolved over the past few years, and I really love where it's going. But what that means is I've got a lot of crafting materials here that really are collecting dust. And rather than move it and rather than clutter up an already cluttered room, I decided to send it back out to the universe so that someone else can enjoy making things with it. So I was at my thrift store uh, a few times this week and that I'm very proud of myself. I only went in once, even though I was there a few times dropping things off. I only went in once and I did find a few good things. So let's take a look. And then, oh, I was at my Kirby church book sale today and I just found, I found five books there. So, uh, so let's take a look. So this is the first uh, book that I found, Strawberry Acres by Grace Richmond. So, you know me, I, it's hard for me to walk past a, a red book. I love it. Um, and I love the salutation inside to Tom from Fred, which I find very interesting. Um, and this is, I think it was 1911. The salutation says 1913, but I seem, yep, 1911. So this is an old book, 109 years old. So this will be a fun one to do at some point. Um, I got a very interesting, I love math type books. They make really interesting page spreads in journals. So this is uh, the new course in bookkeeping. And I think when it's done, it will also make a nice sized uh, journal. I love when they can serve two purposes, that the pages are cool. They've got math pages. This would have been good to put into, um, into the country banker. Well, next time, there will be another country banker at some point. I love this. Look at all these checks. How to write checks. Wow, it looks like something must have been in there at some point. Somebody used it for pressing, maybe. Anyhow, let's see what year this is. Oh, it was 70 cents when it was published. 1946. So that's an old one as well. Um, these, the next few things are really cool. I'm very excited when I can find these. What did I pay? $1.99. Well worth it. Uh, it's a book of reproduction old postcards. 
and they're actual postcards, so they're terrific for journaling space in, um, in junk journals. Isn't that awesome? I just love them. Look at all these beautiful little children. Oh, look at that baby. Wait, my light's shining, sorry. Cute. So I was very happy to find this and it looks like it's complete. It looks like happy birthday, love, Jeff, Wendy, and Carrie. I always wonder if it's ever going to be anyone I know. My, the town I live in is not that big. So, um, yeah, that's, that's intact. That's cool. And then same with these, um, two fully intact antique, uh, paper doll books. From what I can tell, look at these. Isn't that beautiful? Not sure I like the politically incorrect ones, but I usually just get rid of those. These are beautiful. Oh, I will definitely use these. I snapped these up the same way I snapped up those books that I saw that have that I grabbed <laughs> of the uh, Victorian uh, wrapping papers that were wallpapers. I love those. Oh, these are so pretty. Wow. Yeah, that's all intact. That's the complete book. It, nobody cut into it. What did I pay? $1.99. Yay. I love my little town store. Cute. I like that there's lots of dolls. It looks like this one could be a double-sided doll. Wow. All right. I've never seen that before. I, I do believe that that's the other side and that you can glue them together and dress both sides of your paper doll. I loved paper dolls when I was growing up. I used to make my own and design the clothing and I just loved it. I would do it for hours and hours and hours. Yep, these are. So those look like they would glue together and then you can put both sides of the outfit on your little doll. Wow, and hair, oh, beautiful. These are really thick. It's not even paper, it's cardboard. So they're, they'd be not necess not the easiest to cut through. I think I'm. they'd be good uh, if you could cut around them for um, journaling cards. Yeah, look at that. It is right. Glue back and front together of doll. Very cool. And then you can make them stand up. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's amazing. And what did I pay? $1.99. So again, money well spent. I did really well that day at my little thrift store. Um, okay, so my Kirby Church book sale. I got this book. Shakespeare's Comedy of As You Like It. So I just liked the tree on the cover. I'm not sure... I might want to put a plate over that, leave the as you like it, but I'm not sure about leaving so much of that writing. We'll see. Now, how many years? Oh, it's got some nice illustrations in it. Um, uh-oh, don't tell me there's no publication year. No publication year. Oh, there's beautiful plates in it. I love when they do them like this. Wow. Beautiful. You know what? I've never read As You Like It. And I've never seen it uh, performed. So I got that. Uh, hold on. Let me just pick all these books up here. Um, now, some of them I got because they're the right size. Lately, I'm enjoying making massive journals. So some of them are purely because they're just the right size and I plan to play with the cover and decorate it myself so here's a pretty one though of course it's red um robert browning and i wouldn't that make a pretty christmas journal 
like you could put a little Victorian flowers or something inside because that looks like a gold wreath. Wouldn't that make a beautiful um, Christmas journal? Now let's see what year this is. There you are, Robert Browning. Uh, no way. This looks like it's in too good of a condition. It says 1895. Mind you, the paper. Maybe. I mean, I expect it old. I expected maybe 1920, but 1895, really? I just want to make sure. Let me see. Oh, well, that's the only one. Copyright 1895. All rights reserved. 1895. Well, I'll be. Well, isn't that nice? I love that one that works out that way. Now, this one um, isn't that old, but the cover is beautiful. And you know me, my rule is secondhand. Uh, I love this cover. Look at that cover. Isn't that beautiful? The New Oxford Book of Victorian Verse. That's actually like a blue black, and it's such a nice size. But I forget, 87, 1987. So it's not that old, but it's gorgeous. And I can see a beautiful book plate on here. I think that would make a stunning journal. And then, you know me, I'd find a way maybe to incorporate uh, Miss Vicky onto the front there, because that's pretty. We'll see. It'll go on my shelf now that I got all this shelf space. This one is kind of cool. It's one of these typical, these kind of books were really um, popular. This kind of cover, pardon me. Um, you know, 1890s, right up into the 1920s, this style. Um, this is a religious one, obviously. It's a, um, it's a religious book. But it's beautiful, and it doesn't necessarily mean that the journal itself has to be religious. Now, I also think it doesn't have a year. These books seldom do. You can only usually give a ballpark year for publication. This book was purchased by Ethel to replace the original volume belonging to his father, Okay, so that can't be Ethel. Belonging to his father's library, which had been taken. Oh, interesting. Hmm. What an interesting thing to note in the front of a book. Um, anyhow, I just thought even this was pretty, and you could put a, um, a book plate. Where are my book plates? Not there. Oh, come on. See, that's the trouble. You change your Roman brand. Where is everything? Where is it? Honest to goodness. Where are my book plates? Oh, there they are. All right. Hold on. So imagine a paper behind it. Let me stand up. So I could even put a book plate right there. That would look nice. Hmm. Something to think about. I'll tuck that in the back of my head and think about it. So that's a that's a cool one. And then there's one left. Oh, and my my heavy thing. Oh, rats, where do I put this back now? Uh huh. Oh, right there. Okay. <laughs> I've been yelling at this room for two days now. Where did I put this? <laughs> so, again, here's a strange one, but it's a. I like the size. It's in very good condition. I like when a spine actually has kind of a cool title to it. So maybe someday a dog lover would love this, the complete dog book. 
It's uh, a nice green color and the size is just terrific. So I wouldn't necessarily make this into a journal on dogs. What is this, 1964? So it's, it's old, but it does have some drawings and illustrations that I would put back into the journal when I make it. And then, you know me, I would, I would play with it a bit and uh, make it fun. Oh, look at all those. Aren't they cute babies? Oh, there's Collie. I have a grand Collie named, named Sunny and uh, another one named Jessie. My daughter has Collies. They're lovely dogs. Such sweet-natured dogs. Oh, hey, it's like Dot, <laughs> the little wiener dog. <laughs> Dot, it's your cousins. Anyhow, yeah, so... I like uh, I like my choices that I made. I think this could be fun. Even with that gold writing, it's fun now. I love putting the uh, exposed signature threads down a spine like this with all that gold. I think that could be really, really pretty. And then maybe an old master of a beautiful dog painting on the front. Oh, oh don't get me going. All right, that's it. That's my... Uh, that's my thrift haul, and then that's my um, my little sort of pre-sale warning that these will be going up possibly later today. Keep an eye on my Instagram. Um, uh, but definitely, like I said, I'm going to release the videos ahead of time. So if you see the video, don't think, ah, oh, this is it. No, I'm just, as the video is ready, I'm going to release it. And then all three will be for sale at the same time at some point much later on, a few hours later. So that actually gives you time to relax and watch the video in case, just in case, um, these might be a book, one of these might be a book that you think you might enjoy. So thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great rest of your day and rest of your weekend. And uh, I hope you're all safe and healthy. Take care, everyone. We'll talk soon. Bye.